Good afternoon, Jan. Good afternoon, Bruce. Okay, well, we're back for another Friday call. And uh, I don't know exactly what you wanted to talk about <laughs> today. You had a few things, uh, something you wanted to retouch on, the um, uh, transcriber uh, corrections, I think. Yeah, we'll aim at doing a half an hour. Okay. Um, it's also quite improvised. Um, but I think um, it shall be fine. Okay. So uh, transcriber corrections was one of the things. And then uh, you said you want to talk about some language studies as well. Uh, perhaps if you feel like it, because you also did some improvements lately. Yeah. Um, and for the people who don't know yet, um, on the Uralinda wiki, it's very easy to see what has been uh, changed or added or edited recently. So, for mm -hmm. example, uh, this morning on the chapter 8b, Woden and the Magus, uh, if, uh, I'll open it now. And then and you, when you um, click view history, um, and you can um, decide what changes you want to see, and then you can see what has changed. Oh, okay. So, so put some side by side. Yeah. And so here is the there's the father's brother, which you changed into uncle. And after that, we uh, discussed um, that the, the original word actually means uh, father's brother. So it's specific uncle. So we may change this back again. Right. The, my my. So my question to you was whether. Uh, Inca and Tunis are brothers. I don't. I didn't see. I haven't seen anything to tell me that they're brothers. Um, and so if it says fathers apostrophe s brother, yeah, then it sounds like they've got one father. But uh, it could be a brother of two different fathers, uh, uh, and they're cousins. Yeah. That's the way I understood it anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, so then we'd have to change the apostrophe from apostrophe S to S apostrophe. Ah, okay. To make it plural fathers. Yeah, if this is correct, if it's really um, their father's brother, then uh, both their fathers will have been brothers of uh, Steric. Mm -hmm. And in Sweden and probably also the other uh, Scandinavian languages, there's still this distinction between uh, when you say your grandparents, you say father's father uh, or mother's father, yeah. etc. So it may be nice to keep that and not simply say uncle. Yeah, yeah, I agree that we should definitely put that meaning in there. Just uh, I didn't want to falsify and, and lead people to believe that Tunis and uh, Inca were brothers, which mm -hmm. it kind of read that way before. I think uh, Sandbach actually completely got that one wrong and uh, 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 translated it as uh, they were at their father's house. Yeah. Uh, the word is Fedria, Fedria. Yeah. and I think later it says um, Woden and Tunis or Tunis and Inca were ne uh, cousins. Mm -hmm. Neva, I'll quickly do a search. Um, yeah, the three, uh, th the three Neva, three right, Neva, the three young three. kinsmen of aesthetic. Yeah, yeah as the beide Neva. Uh, Ulrich were Askar's neighbor, so there's another is uh, other case of cousins. Yeah, so w we don't really know whether Tunis and Inca mm -hmm. were brothers or not, but it doesn't seem like it in the story later on. No. Uh, so I just w I want to make sure that we change that at least to um, yeah, not not give the impression that they were. Yeah. Well, this was one example of the translation, and we've mm -hmm. done more uh, of that in the earlier chats. And I'd like to say something about what uh, we have been doing recently. Well, you have been doing edits uh, to improve the translation. And Pax and I have been mostly working on the transliteration. So this is the manuscript pages uh, with all the numbers. And here's one page uh, from the Pangap report, the Punjab uh, report from mm -hmm. Yudgert, which has a very different style. Uh, of the language. Yeah, Very, starting there, there's a lot of uh, more kind of modernish uh, feel to it. Or other sounds. Yeah. And um, 
we will uh, make a page on the wiki to explain what these transcriber corrections are uh, meant to be because it started as um, really corrections of um, uh, of type of, or of copy um, copying mistakes or grammatical errors mm -hmm. and later I also decided to uh, use it to make the language more consistent mm -hmm. so if there's one word in various spellings then I would decide what is the most uh, uh, the preferred common. spelling or the most yeah. common or the most mm -hmm. correct yeah because it can also happen that uh, the correct spelling is less frequent than the the more um, yeah. the more common one. You mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it's 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 The A's in the in the alphabet are, are especially in the you know the, the the handwritten version of it are are very difficult to um, to tell apart and 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 kind of hard to write. Uh, you know, it could if you write it just slightly differently, it turns into an H. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and uh, uh, so a lot of times the tail that's at the top, like I see right there where the fun va uh, in this page that you're showing right now, uh, right in the middle there, uh, where it says uh, the uh, uh, dro, dro, um, what does it say there? Drostna fonta. Yeah, uh, 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 that da in the middle there. So that that a doesn't have a tail on it at all, right? No. Uh, and so you can't tell whether it's da or or de. Um, and uh, so that happens a lot with the and. Also, I notice that sometimes it's end. Yeah. Uh, uh, and and other times it's on, <laughs> and uh, it's it's. Yeah, the pages are very different. Uh, here's also a word that you can only read from the con by knowing the context. Uh, some pages are much more uh, tidy, mm -hmm. um, but what yeah. I'd like to explain is that uh, this is actually uh, very exciting for me because until now, well, I, I did word studies, but I was mostly into understanding the language and the text so I could make a good translation. Mm -hmm. But now um, it's a um, higher level where I can actually where I start to understand the grammar so well that I can m correct much of it. Yeah. And there's a lot of, um, well, it makes, it becomes clear that uh, yeah, we are used to one correct spelling, but for them, it was not important, um, apparently, this spelling, because there's so much variety, uh, even within one text sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and it makes it much easier later on to also teach this language to other people who want to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, for when when there's all this variety, it is much more difficult. Yeah, I mean these these were not monks, right? So no. it, a lot of the the texts that were handed down from Latin and stuff, you, you, these were monks. They, they they dedicated their entire existence to just sitting and copying these texts. Uh, uh, but these these were just normal people who, between whatever it is they had to do to, to live and, and live a normal life, they, they were copying old texts that were maybe also had gotten, you know, in one case, we know they had gotten wet. Uh, so they, they are copying stuff that uh, maybe was really difficult to read to. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it makes sense that they, they made a lot of... Uh, uh, errors. I don't know if errors is the is the right thing to call them. Really, just uh, um, yeah, I or guess just variety. Yeah, yeah. And you can also recognize the change of sounds over in time. Some cases, yeah, yeah. Uh, pliga, plega, for example. Here, I've uh, there's a whole list here. Uh, sometimes plural and singular is also not um, used consistently. And I can I understand now what um, Beckering Fingers uh, meant when he wrote the gibberish in which the Uralinda is written, because when you expect uh, a language to be uh, fully consistent with its grammar and spelling, then it is uh, somewhat chaotic. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think about. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. I was just I, when I was doing the dishes yesterday. Sometimes when I'm standing doing the dishes, I, you know, I just sit there and think about uh, different words and stuff that you run across. And one of them was going through my head 
yesterday was uh, meniska, yeah. and, and, and then you've got miniska and moniska. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and they all, they certainly all are used to mean exactly the same thing. And I've tried to figure out, is there a, is there a system to when it's miniska and when it's uh, moniska mm-hmm. and meniska? Uh, but I don't think so. I think it's uh, even in the same text. Sometimes you'll yeah. see it spelled different ways. Yeah. Yeah, it is really fascinating. Uh, so I've done these studies. Um, I used to do them on the on the Fr- uh, French Cadence weblog mm-hmm. as examples. But now the last few weeks I've done so many. It's just too much to all put on the on the wiki. Yeah. Uh, there are these various word studies here. There are a few examples. Some of them are better than others or more uh, detailed. Uh, here we still have all the variety. But now uh, Pax, our Danish volunteer, has also written a um, short program that you can use to um, to download the whole transcription from the wiki. Oh. Um, and you can choose if you want to have the the line and page numbers included with the brackets or not. Oh, wow. And if you, uh, yeah, well, in what way you want to, the most recent version. And mm-hmm. with that, uh, I'll show here how I have a transcript like that, generated by this program. And then you can search for words um, with control find. And you can also, with a uh, online software, make a whole list of all the different words uh, for example, here I put it in a spreadsheet. I've made an alphabetical list with all the num- with the number of um, how mm-hmm. many times it's used. Oh wow! And this is really good for me to stu- to study the language more, to find other varieties of a verb, for example, all the declinations. Mm-hmm. And so those were all the that there was just all of the uses of ach uh, uh, yeah. and. and Okay. 20 times. And then there's, uh, when there's word, uh, varieties that only occur once or twice, you can see that, um, for for example, here, af- after. Mm-hmm. Okay, after without an accent is used 10 and times. After, yeah. And with an accent, it's 72 times. So after will be the, the, the wrong, yeah. the good spelling. Ah. But sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. we leave the variety because, um, for mm-hmm. example, and. Right. It is so uh, frequent in both varieties. Um, yeah. We yeah, will yeah. make a, a, a wiki page to explain the, metho- the methodology of, uh, of this um, exercise. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's really exciting because this was never done and this will make it easier to really revive this language yeah 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 aside from all of the <clears throat> argument about uh, uh, you know uh, the, the authenticity of the manuscript and all of that stuff the language you know it, the, the book exists as i always say and and the language is there and it's uh, and it's certainly interesting and you know hell if people can if people can do a degree in klingon which I've always heard that you can do at some university, um, which is obviously just a made-up language. This one, uh, uh, you know, uh, is it's certainly not just uh, uh, freely invented by somebody. It's uh, it's uh, it's got it's got something uh, historic historic about it, and it's uh, yeah. What's fascinating is that people uh, when you only speak English uh, and no other Northern European language. Of course, you will uh, recognize certain words because um, English is one of the descendants of this language, mm-hmm. um, it seems. But if you also know Dutch or German or a Scandinavian language, it will be much more exciting and it will also be much more um, easy Reward. to see how, um, how, even if this language would be made up, eh? yeah. like there has been Esperanto. Mm-hmm. which was aimed to be a sort of a universal language, like yeah. a sort of lingua franca. Yeah. And there are now people, uh, like in Germany, I know many people who don't like to speak uh, English or to use English, not only because they're not good at it, because, but also because they, uh, 
uh, not only Germans, also Scandinavians or Dutch people who uh, maybe they prefer German, even though it's more difficult for them. Yeah, it's like the French. They don't like to speak any other language. You go to, yeah. to France, they, they will speak to you in French. Just, just, they yeah. just keep speaking French, no matter what language you throw at them. Um, um, but uh, it, it somehow works. <laughs> but if this language could be used by people who have languages that descend from this, or yeah. seem to uh, descend from this, uh, they could have a shared language that is a sort of an ancestor of all these languages. Yeah, or whether it's an ancestor or not, but yeah. it's certainly it's a, it's a middle ground. Yeah, that's the cool thing about it. Like the thing that we, uh, it's something that I was uh, uh, talking to somebody at work about, actually. It's it's funny to, to talk to somebody about this that has no understanding or no knowledge of, of what's going on. But, uh, uh, you know, we discovered that, that tear, the word tear and the word tar mm -hmm. are the same in the Uralinda, right? So it's, um, I think it's with the accent down, so it's ter. Ah, yo, yeah, ter, um, of tar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah maybe, maybe they spell it without the accent sometimes, but uh, it definitely is used for the word tear, like tears coming out of your eyes. Yeah. Uh, and at the same time, it's used as a, a, a tear, as in the, uh, the sap coming out of a tree to make tar, yeah. to pitch. And, uh, you know, and then and then you even uh, equated it with the German word tran, mm -hmm. which means oil, uh, um, which in Dutch, though, still means tear. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so the word oil, the word tar and the word tear are all the same root, or at least in this language, they are. Um, yeah. I don't know what the official etymology of the word tear is, but... Uh, I've just uh, opened um, the sites that I use a lot, mm -hmm. like Dutch etymology is sometimes very helpful. Yeah. And the historical yeah. words... So that word tran there is exactly the same as the, the German word for oil. Yeah. And here was the fish oil. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah for like fish oil. Yeah. yeah. And this is also very helpful. This is like um, historical dictionaries. Of Dutch and Frisian. Um, well, people can try this out themselves. Yeah, it's just it's just fascinating how you how you uh, start to, things just start to fall into place. You know, when you yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've never really thought about the word tar before, tear, like you know. But but then when you read it, well, the the thing that is relevant to my life is that I chew this chewing gum that I told you about called mm -hmm. Mastix. Which is the it's the it's the sap of a tree uh, from Greece, and uh, it's called on the package. It says tears. So so original mastix tears. Uh, so uh, it 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 puts all of that together. Right? It's uh, it, it's literally I'm 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 chewing the the, the mastic tar out of a tree, which they call tears. Yeah. And and now we etymologically realize that it's the same word. Yeah, that's a nice thing. The 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 aha moments uh, yes. that you have when you study this language mm. have been for myself um, so so nice and so interesting and so uh, well, all these little aha moments together, I've said earlier, uh, have made it um, convincing to me that that this is more than uh, just um, something made up. Yeah, yeah, that's what I always say too. It's like if, whoever came up with this book, I mean, it was just a. He, if it was one guy or three guys, it's a, you know he would have had to be a, a, a super. His head brain would have had to be like a supercomputer of, of words, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and etymologies and relationships between things. And, uh, you know, we listened to that uh, that fellow, I can't remember his name, uh, uh, who uh, uh, talks about, uh, you know, all European culture coming from the Etruscans. And, uh, um, he, you know, he's certainly right that there's no archaeological evidence or there maybe there's no, maybe there's not. No, but I know of no archaeological evidence. Uh, you can't find the script anywhere. You look at the Etruscan script, you look at the early Latin script, you look at you know, different scripts from around the world, the Gothic uh, uh, script, 
and you tr- and and you try to find little bits and pieces of this, and I don't see it anywhere. I can't really, you know, I, if I'm if I'm completely honest, I don't see. Obviously, the numbers are exactly the same, but um, uh, it. Uh, it's it's annoying that you can't find any other sources, but the language is so rich yeah. that it, it's it almost it makes it unnecessary for me to have any other kind of uh, material source. Yeah, well, you should ask yourself the question: uh, Is it possible that this uh, culture really wasn't that interested in um, writing this language into stone that much? Uh, mm. I have uh, an image here of, um, I think, 18th century um, in Amsterdam, where there's a lot of uh, written paper on the wall. And, of course, there's this one uh, where it says West Indies House. It may, be, it may be wood or it may be metal with painted. Right, yeah. yeah But we if, don't these, know. if for these people it was uh, very normal to carve in wood or to stitch on textile mm -hmm. or to write on uh, writing felt or paper, all materials that um, get lost. Mm -hmm. That's true. It says it was something we were talking about yesterday with the word written and uh, 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 schreven. Yeah. Uh, uh, that perhaps, so you're saying that maybe the stuff that was written on the Berg walls yeah. was not actually carved into them because it doesn't say carved in stone. Mm -hmm. It says written. Uh, so you're saying maybe that was just on tapestries or something or, or, or paper. Yeah, or wood, because it's much yeah. easier to carve in wood. Yeah. And you still see it in Germany a lot on our old houses. And they also then paint the letters that are carved out. Yeah, I mean, right there, that picture you're showing, the vest, vest in this house, yeah. uh, it certainly looks like a wooden gate, right? And uh, yeah, there have been these great, great studies by uh, Iwar and some others who are arguing that uh, much of what we think is antiquity may have been, or perhaps all of it, may have been um, concocted in the Renaissance time, so the 14th and 15th century. Yeah. And I will have to do a special or a blog post about it with some relevant links so people can look that up themselves. Right, they, those guys that we're talking about it, they even allude to stuff like yeah. that. So yeah. what if many of those inscriptions that we think are an, are from Roman antiquity are actually uh, from that time? Mm -hmm. um, When they were in the monument building yeah. and stuff. Yeah, interesting. And by the That's way, very interesting. There's one uh, fragment in Uralinde where it says they find a stone in which um, the writer had carved his name. Mm -hmm. So that's one example that it's, uh, if it's true, uh, there, there may be. That's right, there I remember be. that, yeah. After the flood. And and does it say Eskreven or does it say Vritten? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it it yeah, will probably be sure. Vritten. Uh, I have to look that up. Yeah. But you can only... Uh, in stone, it will have been car um, carved, not painted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's really neat. By the way, the vest in this house uh, that's in uh, Harlingerstraat in yeah. uh, in uh, Amsterdam. For anybody who's <laughs> interested in seeing the real place, it's I think they've turned it into some kind of a fancy restaurant now. Uh, yeah, uh, I walked past that very often when I lived there. Yeah, there were all, it was always also the East Indian Company, which was larger and older. Well, in Hoorn, for example, or in Enkhuizen, or in Middelburg, there is uh, much more uh, left of the yeah. East India Company. Mm -hmm. I'm reading um, some books by uh, Nico Dross, um, much about uh, the East Indies uh, at the moment. I'm very fascinated uh, by that part of history as well. Absolutely, it's the it's the you know if the if the Freyas are the um, kind of the, the laid the groundwork for Western civilization of old, uh, um, uh, the the Dutch is, and uh, from 1680 or when 1660 for the Dutch uh, West Indies East Indies Company they la laid the foundations for our modern uh, civilization really. Mm -hmm. um, So if you will keep this short, there's one more mm -hmm. thing I'd like to show, and that's how um, Jan Ottema, in his second edition, has also experimented with writing in this language by translating Old Frisian laws into this variety of uh, Old Frisian. And oh. I, I've put it in the Freya script here. 
also. It's a okay. stop script. So this is something that Jan Ottema came up with. Yeah, it was actually a longer uh, text. Right. You form a nade is, and I just copied this today. I haven't checked it for mistakes. And then Goff Jensma in his dissertation, he had one little fragment only at the, and on his acknowledgements page. I've sometimes argued that people who say, well, it's made up as a joke, they should try to write one page in this language and see how mm. uh, difficult that is, even if you're an old vision specialist. Yeah. And on my weblog, I've sometimes uh, done fragments. I may try to find some more and put it on this, um, is this list of examples, experiments. And on the, in my very first edition, I had uh, included a letter of instruction that I wrote. And there's some fragments of it here. Mm -hmm. And very nice. I was. Uh, it was nice to see that Pax on the forum uh, also uh, wrote a short uh, piece in um, in this language. Oh boy! I'm no, starting oh, to feel it. like I'm slacking. I haven't <laughs> written anything yet. Well, you greeted me once in the French that's language. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> but I, my pronunciation was bad. Um, and then I also wrote an email uh, recently um, in this language. So yeah, that's it's the nice because thing. we have the font now, so we can do that. Yeah. And of course, you can also do it simply in uh, capitals. Uh, then it looks um, like this. Uh, so in the, when in the Freie Stunt script, which also it was made by Pax. Yeah, this is wonderful. And I, I'd like to do much more uh, by really making grammar lessons and uh, teaching this language to whoever is interested and making well, perhaps to systematize to do that, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I've made a study of the use of the second person in uh, Uralinda, mm -hmm. which is relatively easy because you can search and find you, mm -hmm. English you in our translation, and then you find both plural and singular. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think the language will be one of the best arguments for authenticity of Uralinda. Hmm. Yeah, or, or it, yeah, at least uh, there's, there's definitely something to it. I mean, there's no anybody who's who's spent time as much time with the language as we have just realizes you just this you get a feeling for it. But uh, the well, the nice thing that I uh, noticed when I was reading in this language for audience or for people in private, they say that it resonates so strongly. Yeah. They really like to hear it and they uh, understand it. Uh, if they're Scandinavian or German or Dutch or English, they understand parts of it. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, so and if you tell somebody about it, they, I, I, I've been it's, it's funny. I work at a reception desk, so I see people that there's pass by and in passing, I, I will sit there. I'll be sitting there working on something and mm -hmm. uh, start talking to people about it. And like there's a guy who is a a political philosophy teacher or something or professor and uh, I, I printed out some of the laws to give to him uh, so, you know the, the, the ones that kind of explain the the way of life about how you get a house when you're 25 and um, three and, and the the useful precedents mm -hmm. um, from uh, who, who wrote those uh, Mino I guess yeah um, uh, and uh, uh, he was real thankful for that. And then there was a Spanish lady I was talking to and I explained to her some stuff and she started to get tears in her eyes, you know? Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, so and, and so there's just these human reactions to it. Uh, also, um, there's, th th there's something in that too, because if you, if you look at it from a, you know, an energetic perspective or, or something, you know, you're not going to get that kind of same uh, reaction from, from uh, yeah, you know, if you're telling somebody the Harry Potter story, or something, yeah. you know? uh, so. Uh, and I've had the same with emails. People emailing me. Uh, I'm I'm not a good email uh, person myself. I, um, I'm sometimes way too late to replying. Hmm. Uh, but I've uh, received emails from people also really saying how much it has uh, improved or enriched uh, their lives. Um, so even though it's not, there's not much on the internet, not much uh, discussion or people sharing their enthusiasm about it. Yeah. I know from all these um, individual cases that it does, it is, um, uh, it has this effect. Yeah. 
And people ask me, uh, will there be a new book? And I'm not sure if I can um, produce a new one before uh, Yule, which was the ideal. And mm. we, we may still try to do that. But I feel yeah. really motivated to um, to do this new language work in mm -hmm. rewriting uh, Ura Linda. And I will also, I would also I'd like, I'd like yeah. to add that the transcriber corrections we are doing now, uh, it's no longer a real transcription. So at some point we will need to go back and also um, create a version that doesn't have all these corrections. Right. Uh, but this is particularly uh, good for people who want to study and learn the language. And then they can still see what is the original mm -hmm. and they can still see what changes we made. But they won't be confused by all of the different uh, uh, variety. In yeah. It. yeah. The, the only the, the one thing that I realized while we were talking is that we haven't done anything with the Runskrift and maybe that's going to be my uh, my calling once ah. I finish with the editing because I'm not a computer person you know yeah. I sit at the computer to do the work because it has to be done on the computer but I hate turning on the computer I just hate it uh, and and uh, but I, I like to write uh, so uh, maybe maybe for me uh, it'll be the runs learning the Runskrift and uh, yeah figuring that out well I in one video it's uh, saved from the flood video I will not open it now but there is uh, a reconstruction I made of how the runscript would look like if it was actually written. Mm -hmm. I will dig that up and maybe make a new higher resolution version now. Oh yeah, that's that's neat because I mean people people you know in Europe there's I mean everywhere of course but especially in Europe like in Germany the the way that the people wrote pre World War Two. And now, and then pre World War One, the, the the writing has undergone so many changes, you know. And it's really beautiful the way if, if you if you get a letter from or if you see a letter from somebody back in the forties or something, just the way they wrote. It's hard to read, but it's uh, it's it's such it's so much more appealing than the way people write now. Um, and uh, yeah, so for me, I, I, I think maybe uh, just realize that that's what I'm going to try. I'm going to yeah. try to learn to, to actually write it instead of uh, instead of always relying on the uh, on the computer uh, version. I found one example that I made earlier. Schreven to Ludwig. This is from a part of Liko's mm -hmm. letter. Yeah. And then I made it into the run script like this. Neat. Cool. Well, I'll have a closer look at that once we have the video up. I appreciate your time, Jan. Yeah. And uh, I uh, wish you a happy Friday. And uh, hopefully we'll talk again here online soon. You too, Bruce. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.